telling the different story of our continent. This continent has always been unfairly characterized. For a very long time, the narrative ran about conflict, about disease, underdevelopment, poverty. But in between all those, and we are not saying that we do not have conflict. Yes, we have conflict. In uh, DRC, we have Kenyan forces. In Somalia, we have challenges in Sudan. But that does not define our continent. I want to say thank you more for telling a different story about our continent. That indeed in this continent we have heroes. The future belongs to this continent if we are organized. I am very convinced that the future belongs to us because contrary to the narrative that has been built about this continent of failure, disease, poverty. Now, I'm not saying that's not part of what we are, but we, we are better than that. Africa is home to six of the 10 fastest economies, growing economies in the world. Africa is home to the youngest, creative, innovative, educated population in the world. This continent has the highest energy and mineral resources anywhere in the world. In fact, this continent will have a quarter of the world's population by 2050, meaning we will be the single largest market in the whole world. And therefore, that potential that exists in our continent, if organized, we can be able to leverage and drive this continent to where we want it to be. But even as we do that, we must also work on the governance of our economy, democratizing our governance and democratizing our economy. We all know that the Berlin Conference pieced Africa into 50 odd different states. And as a result, barriers, borders, roadblocks were established. That's why today Africa has the least intra-Africa trade. And we only contribute 3% of the world's trade because if you cannot trade with your neighbor, you are most unlikely to have any meaningful trade anywhere. And it is the reason why we are consolidating and we are democratizing and consolidating our continent and our economies. When I came into office, my Minister for Trade has been to 15 countries, from Egypt to South Africa, to put together the pieces that will establish the tripartite agreement so that we can conclude the ACFTA, the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, so that we can consolidate the African market into the potential that it has, a potential of 1.2 billion people and an economy of $3.5 trillion. That will present to us the opportunity to engage with the rest of the world on an equal footing. I am very happy that my brother Mamadou here has mentioned about the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, and we are working on it as leaders in this continent so that we can assemble our assets and we can claim our place. Because indeed, yes, we have the challenge of climate change. And climate change portends an existential threat to humanity, not just the global south. It portends an existential threat, a threat to humanity. We cannot continue. It is now a foregone conclusion that we must stop 
manufacturing, industrialization, using fossil fuels, and we have, if we have to save this continent, if we have to save this globe, if we have to save humanity, we must transit into green, clean energy. It's not my words. It is science that has proved that industrialization that we have pushed using fossil fuels is what is causing us the tragedies, the famine, the droughts, the flooding, the uh, 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 climate change that the world faces today. And you know, fortune sometimes comes in different, in different ways. In Africa, in my community, they say sometimes bad things come accompanied by good things. Now that we are here and the conversation is concluded that we must transit, we must decarbonize our manufacturing, we must green our manufacturing, Africa holds the key to green future for the globe. Why? We have the largest, by default, maybe, by God's grace, I think so, the largest deposits and potential of green energy. We have 20,000 gigawatts of geothermal energy. We have 60% of the world's solar resources. We have 10,000 terawatts of wind energy in this continent. And we have 340 gigawatts of hydro energy. Nowhere else in the world do you have those kind, that kind of potential. And therefore, the future of manufacturing, the future of industrialization, the future of hydrogen energy is going to be in this continent. And as a continent, we must prepare ourselves. We must make the case so that this time round, the story is not told by others. The narrative is not written by others. We must write the narrative ourselves. We have the assets. And we want to meet halfway. We will come with our geothermal resources, our energy resources, our mineral resources, our um, 1.2 billion uh, people market. We will come with our young people, innovative, creative, educated. As our assets, we want to meet halfway with the rest of the world. Let them come with technology, let them come with investment, we will meet halfway and it will be a win-win engagement. <laughs> Finally, I know Mo doesn't like long stories. I will be brief. Finally, let me say we need to have a, a candid conversation about the international financial architecture. It is not possible for us to continue with the architecture that is uneven. As was said, many of the countries in our corner are saddled with huge debts, sometimes not a fault of their own. Let me put to you a simple example. When we go to um, the Eurobond market, we're borrowing now at 15%. Other countries are accessing development resources at half a percent, maybe 1%. Sometimes 0.2%, sometimes 0.1%. So the difference is that those of us on this side are accessing development resources 100 times more expensive we pay 100 times more interest than our compatriots on the other side. Just explain to me 
how you are going to develop at the same rate. If one person is accessing development resources at 0 0.1, 0.2%, another one is accessing at 15%. Is that feasible? So we need to have a candid conversation, good people. We need to have a candid conversation with World Bank, with IMF, with all the multilateral financial institutions, so that we can remove this fallacy that Africa is risky. We can remove this fallacy that the element of risk is what makes development resources available to Africa expensive. In any case, it is now proven that Africa actually high, has the highest return on investment. You can calculate it using any metrics or any algorithm. Africa gives the highest return on investment. And therefore, we need to have a candid conversation about how we can develop. We are not asking for a financial system that favors, that favors Africa. No, we are asking for a balanced one. We are asking for a fair one. And I don't think it's too much to ask. So, Moi Brian, let me come back to you. Thank you very much for giving us a platform to give our own narrative in our own language, in our own understanding. Congratulations, my brother, for this great recognition. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.